if you ask a general north indian guy what he thinks is the most south indian thing ever chances are the first thing he thinks about apart from the ultimate cliche of lungi dance or apti pode or rajnikanth or idli dosa or those action scenes after which watching you tonight from a ceiling fan chances are the first thing he thinks about is the script on second thought do you actually think about this Hello everyone, Nilanj on this side. After making a video on the Sanani script, I just thought of going to its northern neighbor, the Tamil script. If compared to other Dravidian scripts like Malayalam, Kannada, or Telugu, this seems like the most unrounded script ever. Has the most straight lines, and in fact, sometimes needs only straight lines to write. Well, we will discuss about it later. Now let's get to the history. Tamil script, like most of the Indic scripts, finds its origin from the Brahmi script. That being clear, the oldest script which is said to be ancient Tamil script originated in the time period between 268 to 232 BC, during which the Mauryan king Ashoka ruled, which aptly named this period the Ashokan period, although he never ruled the parts where Tamil Brahmi script originated. But if we broaden our definition of the Tamil script, the oldest example dates back to 400 BC. As we saw in the Sanelis episode, Tamil was very different in comparison to other Brahmi-based scripts, very different from the Ashokan Brahmi for sure. One example of difference which was given by this former bureaucrat named Iravatan Mahadevan was the distinction between pure and mixed consonants to which where I would want to refer to my Sanelis video please watch it Also according to the above gentleman the script had slightly different vowel markers had extra characters for the sound not present in Sanskrit and no separate characters for the voiced and aspirated consonants Most of these are sources for the inscription from the 2nd century AD grammar book named Todkapiyam though there is a slight twist The modern Tamil script doesn't descend from it. The Pallava kingdom created the Pallava script which also gave birth to the Grantha script which gave birth to the Malayalam script and if things go in order that is our next episode is going to be about. Pallava script also gave birth to the Vadaruttu script which is the twin brother of the Tamil script two good chums hanging out in a park when Vadaruttu script ran for an ice cream and got hit by a truck and died. Anyway, The Pallava script didn't last long as when the Chola Empire took over they replaced the Pallava script with their own ripoff. After the amount of tragedy the Tamil script faced the cousin named the Grantha script tried to keep in touch with him thus influencing his cousin by many means. As we discussed in the Sanelis episode writing on certain surfaces can help a writing system diverge quite a lot from its previous forms. In this case too the writing system was heavily influenced by the fact that it was written on palm leaves. Leaf being a fragile surface influenced the scribes to write more carefully to take care to not to rip the entire leaf. of one example is the puli to distinguish between the vowel and the non vowel consonants had become absent for a while just because using that apparently damaged the page so i personally don't think putting a dot on a page damages the page seriously what were you guys thinking also the vowel marker for the rounded close central vowel u was dropped and the sound for that vowel used to get represented by the rounded close back vowel u the steps to modify the writing system to type it were taken between the 19th to the 20th century ad that brought back the puli character the dot above the character which used to make it non vowel that finishes the history segment now let's look for this relation with other scripts Malayalam is related to Tamil script to the Pallava script. Malayalam shares a huge amount of similarities with Tamil characters except the fact that Malayalam incorporated a huge amount of Sanskrit loan words thus required to have characters that represent voiced and aspirated consonants. Telugu although derived from the Brahmi script doesn't share notable similarities given that it diverged with the arrival of Bhatri Bolu script in the 1st century BC. Kannada although derived from the Brahmi script doesn't share notable similarities given that it diverged with the arrival of Bhatri Bolu script in the 1st century BC. As Wikipedia basically gave up on Brahmi the best I can say to you all without the fear of misinformation is that close proximity or close distance help these two scripts stay connected as we discussed in the Sinhalese episode Tamil Brahmi also was the base of origin of the Sinhalese script. Kama is quite unexpected but it also descended from the Pallava script as the script was exported to Cambodia during trade in the 7th century AD. Now we will end up the segment and begin our segment towards the actual script. But first let's discuss some basic characteristics and then get to the actual characters. Tamil is orthographically an abugida which means that it puts vowel markings all around consonants. In case of Tamil the markings span all the cardinal directions north east west south. As we discussed in the history segment the oldest Tamil inscription is dated back to 400 CE. It is written from left to right just like in Latin or Devanagari. Now let's see the script and see what it actually looks like. Tamil has 12 vowels and 18 characters and a special character named Akku which is neither a vowel nor a consonant. If you thought it ends there you really need to incorporate almonds into your diet as we literally discussed a few minutes last seconds ago that Tamil is an abugida which means that vowels conjoin with consonants. That being said 
The total amount of characters we will find after using all possible abigidas on all consonants is a grand total of 216 vowel consonant characters. So that will amount up to 12 plus 18 plus 216 is equal to 446 different characters plus that one three dotted character that will end up being 247 characters in total. To write this script now I really need to switch to my IPA keyboard. In Tamil language the 12 vowels the script represents are a, a, e, e, u, u, a, a, i, o, o and au. The 18 consonant characters which this script represent are this character for k, g, kh, g and h. G. This character for ch, j, s and k. Nya. This character for t, d, n, n. This character for t, d and d, n. This character for p, b, h and b, ma, ya, ra, la, va, da, la, and this character for t, d and n. So I would think that why would any script represent so many sounds with just one character? Well, you should certainly keep in mind that some languages do not differentiate between voiced and devoiced characters. This script may work perfectly for Tamil. I don't know. I don't speak or write Tamil. But this would be a disaster when writing Hindi. Because Hindi is a language which not only differentiates between voiced and unvoiced characters, but also aspirated and unaspirated characters. Sounds like T, Th, Th, Th are separate entities because they can completely change the meaning of a sound. Tal means rhythm or beat. Thal, on the other hand, means a plate. You see, it completely changes the meaning of what it actually is supposed to mean. This distinction simply just doesn't exist in the Tamil language, so it didn't feel the need to put different characters for it, thus causing a bit more confusion. Also, it has six added characters for the sound J, K, Sh, S, H and Sh. Now I may ask, what sound does the Akku represent? Well, earlier it used to represent the devoiced wheel of fricative H, but as the sound faded away, it found its purpose in getting used for lone characters like F, Z and K. So I can write to India a friend Afzal Khan's name in Tamil without sounding like having a list when saying Abjal Khan. Now there used to be this weird era where numbers were used to mark the voice and aspirated consonants as you needed to use Sanskrit in some way or the other as Sanskrit being an Indo-Aryan language is obviously full of voice and aspirated consonants. So this is the character for K as we discussed. And this is the character for K. This K with a 2 in the lower half like you are studying some sort of chemistry here. Likewise, these are the characters for G and G. And mixing two characters will make you feel like you are studying chemistry in Tamil. Ah yes, this is the only thing left. As we discussed earlier, Tamil is an abigida. So now we have to discuss its abigida forms and how it combines the vowels and the consonants together. Given the security that all the characters are the same abigidas applied to them, let's just take the example of k. This is k without any vowel. You just put a dot in front of it. This is k. You just don't add anything to it. This is ka. This character is added to the writing direction of the character. This is k. This goes behind the consonant first and then takes a round curve above the top and a straight line coming down. This is ki. Here you begin from behind, make an arch and stop before going down and end with a circle. This is ku. This is interesting as even I don't understand what is going on. But the best I could assume is this. Characters with curving ends which end up not making an arch behind. With this abigida, they would make an arch behind and call it a day. If they do make an arch behind by default, you stroke it to the writing direction and they pull the pen upside. And if it ends up in the writing direction, you just put a line upside perpendicular to the character. And this is Q, this is K, this is K and you know what? F*** it. I gave up. See all of them in this beautiful screenshot. I think I would need a glug of water to cool down. Hold a second. Anyway, now to looking at these characters, how did they even manage to get this right on a typewriter? And to be honest, I am still pretty confused how they managed to put this on a typewriter. Especially the one which are marked behind the characters get messed up. Because if a young rich brat did this, all he would do is to take out the paper, look at like he is looking at his dying father, crumble the paper and chuck it in the bin, thus causing the paper to burn, new papers to get made throughout cutting trees and that would cause global warming. I am not joking, just ask your grandpa. Which made typing, at the very least, interesting. Well enough of my poor procrastination skills, now let's head to the last segment of this video. Thank God. Tamil has its very own writing system which is still used sometimes. One thing I found interesting that not only does it represent characters for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, but it also represents character for 10, 100 and 1000. Well, that has left me pretty confused because how are you supposed to write 101 like this or like this? But aside from this, Tamil represents symbols for these things. 
I mean, what does quantity supposed to mean? What is time? Well, um, this is where the video ends. Thanks for watching. If you know something about the Tamil script or something I f***ed up or something I messed up or something I... You know, whatever. Just comment down below and uh, leave a like on this video to make sure that this video gets appreciated if you liked it. And subscribe to this channel to see more of this content. Um, this is the next video is supposedly being on Malayalam, so I would be preparing for it. And as always, till the next video, see ya.